In this video, you will learn about how by integrating the CATDM portal with CA service virtualization, you can generate and inject realistic virtual data into a running virtual service, thereby allowing you to execute varied testing scenarios for effective service virtualization. Often organizations face issues when unavailable constrained components create situations where testers wait for components to become available upstream. Many organizations therefore use service virtualization to provide parallel, on-demand access to the components that distributed teams need. However, creating realistic virtualized services requires realistic data. You cannot expose live service data to non-production environments. Similarly, manual creation of request-response pairs, sample data for a virtual service is a time-consuming and error-prone process. This approach often leads to scenarios where the virtual service data is not exhaustive enough for the rigorous testing. That's where the integration between CA service virtualization and the CATDM portal helps you address such issues. You simply generate and then push the generated request response RR pairs into a running virtual service. This way you route your application to the virtual service so that you can test the application without getting blocked because of the restricted access. Before you start the process demonstrated in this video, ensure that you have created a CATDM portal project and version. Also, you must have created a data generator. You must also verify that you have created a connection profile. Then, you should have configured the CA service virtualization connection information in the portal. Finally, you must have also created a virtual service in CA service virtualization. This diagram helps you understand the overall flow. The steps mentioned in this diagram are applicable for the WSDL, XML RR pair, JSON RR pair, and REST RR pair. For the demonstration purpose, we have used the WSDL file type. The first step in this process is to register the WSDL file object. The second step is to create and register derived tables based on the registered WSDL file object. In the third step, you use the associated XMLRR pair files to import the sample data into the empty tables. The fourth step lets you define data generation rules. After you define your rules, you are now ready to publish the data into the derived tables in the staging database. Finally, in the last step, you export the generated data into XML RR pair files and push those RR pair files into the virtual service in CA service virtualization. So let's see how a test data engineer, Joe Smith, is able to generate data in the form of RR pairs and then push them into a virtual service by following the steps shown in this diagram. In this video, Joe virtualizes a service to get details about the supplier based on a zip code. To virtualize this service, Joe must have multiple XML RR pairs that he wants to host in that virtual service. Joe generates multiple similar XML RR pair files adhering to the schema defined in the associated WSDL file. All the XML RR pairs are then hosted in the virtual service. This is the sample XML RR pair that Joe has. This XML file represents the request information that includes the zip code. This second XML file represents the corresponding response information which includes details of the suppliers. And this is the WSDL file that is used for defining the schema. Joe has logged into the CATDM portal using his credentials. This is the project Medicare and version 1.0 that he has already created as part of the prerequisites. A CATDM portal project acts as a container and provides the context in which Joe performs other related operations in the portal. Similarly, Medicare underscore generator is the data generator. A data generator helps you in the process of writing data generation rules. And Medicare underscore profile is the connection profile. A connection profile lets you establish a connection with a staging database where the tables that you derive from the input source file are stored. Also, he has configured the CA service virtualization connection information in the portal. This configuration allows the portal to communicate with CA service virtualization. Finally, 
He logs into the CA service virtualization UI and creates this virtual service med underscore vs by using the virtualize using rr pairs method. This is the same virtual service where he wants to inject the generated rr pairs. And he ensures that he notes the location of the virtual service because after he completes the export process, he would be using the same location to verify whether XML RR pair files have been uploaded to this virtual service or not. To register the WSDL file, Joe expands modeling and clicks objects. He clicks the register new objects button, selects WSDL as the object type, specifies the object name, provides the location of the WSDL file and clicks the register button. The success message indicates that Joe has successfully registered the WSDL file, which implies that the file has been uploaded to the portal. Now, Joe must generate a relational schema in the staging database on the registered WSDL file. He clicks the created object, selects the required WSDL operation, he then selects the connection profile where the staging database is available. When he clicks the Create and Register Tables button, a job request is submitted. He verifies the status of the job, which is completed. He goes back to the Derived Tables section and verifies that the file is converted into a set of tables. However, these tables are empty. Joe verifies this by navigating to the data generator. Joe must add some sample data to these empty tables. He goes back to the derived tables section and clicks the import data icon. He enters the RR pair link ID. This ID establishes a link between the request file and the response file. He then specifies the location of the XML RR pair files that include the sample data, that is information about the zip code and the related suppliers. Here, he selects the Import to Generator option. He chooses the associated Medicare generator and clicks the Import button. Again, a job is submitted. The job status is completed, which means that the import process is done successfully. Joe is now well set to write data generation rules. To define data generation rules, Joe navigates to the data generator page. These data generation rules include expressions that help generate synthetic data. Joe observes that the tables now include the sample data as a result of the import process. He first clicks the relational edit button and selects both the options so that he can automatically convert all default primary key values into an expression that generates a unique sequential number whenever he publishes the data. And secondly, he can also establish foreign key references in the related tables wherever that primary key is being referenced. Now, he starts with the remaining data generation rules for other required columns. He clicks in the zip cell and then clicks the paintbrush icon called Data Painter. The Data Painter dialog helps the process of writing rules. For the zip column, Joe uses the randlove function. This function generates a random value based on the seed list that is specified. For this use case, US zip codes is used as the seed list. After generating the expression, Joe verifies it by using the Validate button. Similarly, Joe follows the same process to write rules for all the relevant columns. Any constraints that are applied to the columns are also validated and appropriate error is displayed in case of violation. Joe now clicks the Publish button, verifies that all required tables are selected for publishing. He selects the connection profile and the target schema name in the staging database where the data is published. He also specifies the value in the repeat field and clicks the publish button. He again verifies the status of the job which is completed. This implies that the portal has added additional records to the derived tables based on the generation rules. 
Joe now has the data that he had modeled. He can now get started with the export process, which is the final step in this process. Joe performs the export operation so that he can generate XMLRR pair files and export all the generated XMLRR pair files directly into the virtual service in CA Service Virtualization. He clicks the export icon, enters the required information. Note that to export the generated RR pair files into the virtual service, Joe selects the Update Virtual Service option and selects the Configure Virtual Service Environment and Virtual Service which he has already created as part of the prerequisites. Then he clicks the Export button and verifies the status of the job which is completed. This means that the generated XML RR pair files have been exported to the virtual service. Joe can verify this by using any client that can allow him to send a request to a virtual service and get the corresponding response. There are some of the generated XMLRR pair files that Joe has downloaded to verify whether correct XMLRR pair files have been uploaded to the virtual service. Joe now opens a client that allows him to verify that the exported RR pair files are now uploaded to the virtual service. In this client, he enters the location of the virtual service, posts the request content that contains the zip code, and sends that information to the server location where he has simulated the virtual service. The virtual service reads the request and sends the corresponding response, which includes the supplier catering to that zip code. Joe sends a few more requests to verify that the generated files include the correct data that is fit for the purpose. This video helped you understand how a test data engineer successfully generated and injected XMLRR pairs into a simulated virtual service.